there. Can you see this? When you study a three-dimensional object, it really helps to see it in three dimensions. This is six element theory in three dimensions. So this now can become a way for me to teach you how to use this. Here we have the spleen and the spleen flows to the heart. And then the heart flows to, see that arrow, flows to the liver. So here you can see the pattern. If you, if you actually see this, it looks like the sun brilliantly shining at the center of our beings. It's bright, it has rays of light. Some people have seen rings, rings moving around it. I did not see that. But there are three rings. Do you see these lines here? Do you see those lines? Those are three lines that connect complements in the pattern. But they also connect what the French called three circuits. Have you ever heard of, the, of that, the three circuits in acupuncture? Mm -hmm. um, pericardium will flow out to the fingers and then the Sanjiao will flow back to the gallbladder. Uh, yes, yes, this I know. Then yes. the gallbladder flows back down to the liver, and then the liver comes back up, back to the pericardium. Yeah, uh, this forms a circuit. Yes, I have heard of it. Yes. And then it begins this, the pericard. Yeah. So it begins these four meridians form the three circuits. Um, it was very popular in France when France was doing acupuncture. So you have this group of four meridians of the um, seed element and the wood element. So that would be pericardium to san jiao, and then gallbladder and liver, and then liver back to the pericardium, san jiao, gallbladder, liver, pericardium, san jiao. So it creates this circuit. This line right here is a circuit that goes around the pattern. Gallbladder, and then it goes to the pericardium, and we continue that line See how it's now going to the San Jiao? I got to get better at turning this, I think. And then it goes to the liver. And then it goes to the gallbladder and keeps going around. And if you follow this line here, it goes to the heart, bladder. Well, let's start at bladder. Bladder goes down to the feet and becomes kidney. Kidney flows back up to the yes. kidney flows back up to the heart, right? Just and, opposite poles in the diagram. Yeah, I remember. And then the critical. and then the heart flows to the small intestine, and then the small intestine comes back up here to the bladder. And then the bladder goes down to the kidney. So you get that circuit in there. So you can use this pattern to go back and forth. And I'll say the last one is lung. You see these lines coming off of it. The lung will go to the stomach. The stomach will flow to the spleen. The spleen will flow to the large intestine and then the lung. What about do and ren in these okay. patterns? Okay. 
We're now going to superimpose this structure on a human body. Right here is the heart. Imagine the face of a person. The face with the eyes, the nose, the mouth. Basically what we are right now is we're just faces talking to each other. That's all we are. With the with with picture in our screen, I can see your faces. That's all I need to see. You're expressing through your face. You're thinking, your eyes, you're seeing, your senses are coming in through your face. This is Shen. This is the heart. Yes, yes. It's the expression of heart. And if we go down, we see the spleen on the left side of the body and the liver on the right side of the body. And if we come down even farther, we see the small intestine down below. If we go around to the back, we come up from the small intestine. We come, now we're coming up the back, up the spine. We have the kidney. Right in the back where the kidneys are. And as we come back up the spine, we come back to the bladder, which is the back of the brain. And the brain is the nervous system coordinating messages throughout the whole body. So the bladder, which, which flows from the brain, is centered back here. And in the front, so you can see the bladder is the back of the head. The heart is the front of the head. Tell me if you see that. Yes. Now there, I had to really understand this. I had to study mystical practices on how these are on the centers of on the, the energy centers of the body. There's the Kabbalah, which also talks about these centers around the body. But this is the basic nature. So that the, let's see. So, the Ren meridian starts right here between the nose and the mouth, right? That's gonna be right here in the heart. You see that? And then it's going to flow down. As I go down the front of my body, I'm going down this line until I get to the bottom of the, for where it says the small intestine. And then you have some points at the very base in the coccyx area. And then as you come up the backside, let me see if I can get that to turn, there we go. Now you're gonna start the dew meridian from the kidney. We're at the base of the spine, moving up. Now the dew meridian goes from the kidney up to the bladder. So the dew meridian is, is for the element water, kidney and bladder. The ren meridian is for the element fire, which goes down the front of the body to here bypassing the spleen and the liver. So the points along the Ren meridian, for example, the points along the Ren coordinate different flow patterns through this sphere. Uh, I have a doubt here. Go ahead. Basically, if you see the ring meridian, it even crosses the lungs. But at this place, I, I don't see lungs. I see the liver and the spleen, but in center, there has to be a lung. 
Let me go to the back. So the red meridian becomes the dew meridian in the back near the kidneys. See down there? And then it rises up the spine to the brain at the top here. And on either side, you have the lungs and the pericardium. The pericardium is controlling the function of the lung and heart. It's controlling the beating of the heart. It's controlling the breathing rhythm of the lungs so that we're always just breathing perfectly to keep us relaxed and with energy. So the pericardium is here balancing the chest functions of the heart and the lung. And so this is the dew meridian coming up to the bladder. And then as the bladder meridian transitions into the heart, you can't, you can't call it a meridian. At this point, you're just calling it an energy center through which the, through which the body is expressing. Here we are back looking at the face. In the back of the head is the bladder, which is the brain in the back of the head. And then we have the face, which is the heart with the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And we're talking and we can scream and we can hear. And then we come down the wren to here, the small intestine. Um, do you have a question about this? Try to imagine yourself as an egg living and you're surrounded by an egg. You're inside of an egg and that's where your being is. You're inside of a sphere. And then you're going to want to express yourself through that sphere. So you throw your arms through it and you push your face up through where your face is supposed to go, through the heart space. And as you put your face through the heart, other parts of you are, are expanding out through the other sections. The spleen comes out, the liver comes out and they're expressing. And you begin to express your body through this pattern. Now, you'll see the, the gallbladder over here. Daniela, tell me if you see that gallbladder and the stomach. Yes. Uh -huh. And the San Jiao down here and the large intestine down here. These are energy centers where gallbladder over the left shoulder. My picture might be turned around, but the gallbladder over the left shoulder, stomach over the right shoulder, and then over the hips down below, you'd have San Jiao and the large intestine. So the large intestine is near the place where the large intestine comes down. So why these energy, why these energy centers out here and over the hips? Well, the gallbladder is Leo, stomach is Taurus, large intestine is Aquarius, San Jiao is Scorpio. The four, what are they? Daniela? I don't know if... Um, Leo, they Tor are... Leo, Taurus, Scorpio. Fix it. The fixed Fix. signs. They are the fixed signs holding everything together. They are, they are the power to hold the structure together from here and here. And then through the center, all of the other meridians are functioning. The heart is beating, the lungs are breathing, the liver is creating energy. 
So you have these fixed energies as the as basically the structure holding your your personality and your being together. You got the fixed earth, fixed fire, Leo, and then down below, fixed water and fixed air. And those those fixed energies hold you in place while the heart and the liver and the spleen and the kidney and the small intestine and all these other active um, archetypes are moving your body and creating powers to live. And so this, this becomes a way to understand how we fit into this. So this pattern is within us and we're expressing through it but at the same time, we have these meridians flowing through our body. Now, this, this heart pattern, the spherical heart pattern, is in the chest. And you'll see this in many spiritual traditions, from India to China to other places in the world, that that spherical, that spherical pattern exists inside the chest. It's not the real heart, but it's called the heart. It's called the divine spiritual heart. And it's inside of our chest. And you'll notice here that these three lines are crossing right where the chest would be. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. yes. And so you follow that, where all these three lines are crossing, you follow that in, you'll get to the heart inside your chest. Now these other, these lines will also cross back here around the kidneys. And what's the special thing that you'll find at the base of the spine? The uh, base chakra. The base chakra. And in India, what is this called? Sacra chakra. Do you know the word kundalini? Kundalini, yeah, I, I've heard of that. And so down here, you have that power. So there's a power in the chest, and there's a power in the back where these rings are crossing. You don't want to, you don't want to activate these centers. They're so powerful where these three rings are crossing, and they recognize very, very powerful parts of the body. So where these three rings are crossing back here, that's not something you want to just open. You want to keep that intact. You, we don't want to play with it unless we're ready. But where these three lines are crossing back here, you're going to find the power of the kundal kundalini, which goes straight into your heart. But through the power of kidneys, um, I had a friend one time who released his kundalini and that power ran right up his spine from right here, ran right up his spine into his brain. And for three days, he was, had visions of going around the world and being in war rooms and creating art and music. And the creativity was just unbelievable. But after the three days were up, his nervous system was burned. The energy burned his nervous system and he wasn't able to think and function again as before because was too much energy released into his consciousness. That's the power of the kidney back there to hold that fluid, that creativity. He released it and it began to flow throughout his meridian systems and into his brain and consciousness. And for three days, he went into visions, but he wasn't able to protect himself. And he was sick. He had nervous system problems after that. And so we can learn from people who basically make mistakes. They are, they are explorers. They are exploring these things. But they, there's, ra there's dangers and there's risks. But we can see we can see here 
why certain areas of the body are considered sacred. The heart, here in the front. Not the physical heart, but the spiritual heart. And not the heart, the shen of the face, but the spiritual heart that beats a light at the center of our being. And then, so you have the shen up here. And what's the other, what's the opposite of the shen in acupuncture? Jing. Jing. You'll get that from the kidney. So one thing I do is if I want to feel the power of Jing and I want to energize my body, there's something very simple that I do. I visualize this color violet for the kidney and I breathe it in through my kidneys, through the, my lower back. I just breathe in that color into my lower back and I instantly feel my body full of energy, creative energy. It's a safe way to do it. It's a safe way to bring that energy into your body without having to release the kundalini and burning your nervous system. You can, you can attune with it, with a color. So you get that color and you breathe it in through what you feel in the lower back and, and it softly gives you energy. It, soft, it softly gives you creative energy 